All right, welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. I'm your host, and we are going to be playing Rise of the Dread Moon. Under the Dread Moon, the final quest tonight. Now, I know I've been saying for a while, this might be the final <laughs> stretch of the adventure, but that's because it's quest 10. Anything can happen. Who knows? Maybe uh, we'll still be around next weekend doing this. Um, but yeah, don't not to worry. Once this quest is finished, of course, there's other quest expansions for us to pick up. So whether the heroes succeed or die in the attempt, uh, we'll definitely move on. Actually, I think there is... Uh, yeah, I shouldn't say. I'm not going to spoil it. But <laughs> yeah, you'll just have to see uh, if the heroes succeed tonight or if they fail or if uh, we have to continue next weekend. Um, things should be fine next weekend with our uh, Friday, Saturday schedule. Icon Hataki uh, has got a thing going on, so he won't be here tonight. Um, sends his regrets. Bohemius uh, should be here in a few minutes, so we'll definitely wait for him, no problem. But if you're interested in controlling a hero, as usual, uh, join the Discord. So I always show the image at the bottom there of the screen. Join the HeroQuest fans Discord, hop into the quest talk voice channel that's quest talk it's the easiest if you can use your microphone to interact with us we've got virtual dice otherwise only pencil and paper is needed doesn't matter if you've never played hero quest before in your life or if you're an old school fan coming back after you know decades that's that's cool too so we'll get you up to speed no problem anyway i take control of zargon and uh we've got room for plenty of heroes so far we don't have any heroes yet tonight so people may be busy but uh, we'll see what we can do. In the meantime, though, I do have a few things to talk about. As you know, we like to nitpick. Um, I like to say we focus on the fine details of the hobby and the game that we love. So, yeah. So, this was brought to my attention. I guess Ribby is actually to credit for these photos. He took these at Gen Con. I didn't pay any attention. Like, I just thought reference cards are reference cards. Why should I bother? looking closely at these and seeing if there's any like minute differences but really when you think about it think back to when spirit queen's torment and prophecy of telor were re-released you know those formerly mythic only um, booklets when they were released into retail everything changed about them like every last thing you know they, they used the same sculpts for the miniatures yes but the plastic was a different color the uh, quest books, like all the text was reformatted, things were corrected, adjusted, the artwork was changed slightly, like every inch of it was um, changed. Now, in terms of actual mechanical content, did much change? No. But a few things were tweaked. And with HeroQuest First Light, which we still don't know the official release date, maybe uh, at Spiel Essen, in a couple of weeks, we'll find out. Maybe they'll re reveal more. But it's possible that First Light, the alternate game system that's going to stores, retail stores, maybe that'll be out in November. Um, I was talking with Hispa Zargon after the last stream, and we were talking about, you know, um, a good uh, a good rule of thumb is, you know, if a if a developer wants to, their game out in time for Christmas, December 25th, you know, a November release makes a lot of sense. But if they release in January, well, then it's they've missed the, the holiday season. But in any case, um, there's all kinds of possibilities. Originally, we were told maybe January or February, and that was somebody else at Gen Con reported um, that an Avalon Hill employee said it. So <laughs> hopefully it'll be around, out January or February of 2025. Now, the thing is, we were not the only people reporting from Gen Con. There was other people from other communities you know we had Italian Spanish probably French German uh, gamers there we had people who couldn't make it but they were just reporting live stuff you know as reports came in so there's things I missed and I'm just glad that somebody caught it so I'm gonna share these images that maybe other people have seen already but I mean I've only really paid attention to these in the last couple days so it was it was new for me first I want to show you an image that I took myself just today actually to just for comparison's sake this is not a spoiler not really and welcome to PMG and Inklings 
So this was the 2021 HeroQuest remake. So I was one of the people who pledged on the HasLab campaign. I got the Mythic box, you know, not to brag. I'm just saying, like, I was there from the beginning. And anyway, this is what it came with. So were the, there were four of these cards. So in the original HeroQuest, you had your that you had four tiles or boards. They were like bigger than cards for one for each hero. And in the original version, just on the front, it just introduced the hero and told what their stats were. Um, and then in the North American version, so that was 1990, the original was 89, but the North American version, you had starting weapon, starting armor, none, the stats and the little story on the front. And then if you turned it over on the back, it explained all the actions you could do. And so I don't have that ready to hand to show you a picture of what the old one looked like. But in the new version of the game, they got rid of the concept of uh, those uh, hero boards, those character boards. Instead, they just replaced them with just standard poker size uh, cards. So the front of the card would have the picture of the hero, the stats, so attack, defense, body, mind, you know, movement, starting weapon, starting armor. Uh, and then on, on the back, it would just have the story. So the description of the hero actually goes on the back of the card. So then where's where's all the rest of the stuff? Well, they had this concept of turn cards. So the turn card would have the hero quest logo on the back and on the front it tells you what you can do in your turn. Now the nice thing about this is you could have the card next to you at your spot at the table. You've got your character card that tells you your stats and then you've got the turn card right next to it so you can easily look at both of them. So that's kind of cool. Of course, they're small cards, so they get lost in the shuffle of cards, so there's the, that's the downside. Maybe if they'd had a board in both cases. But anyway, it takes up less room. So here's what it said. This is the 2021 version. I don't think the 2022 version changed, but I can't say that 100% for sure because I don't have it in front of me. But this is what the old one said. On a turn, a hero does one of the following. Moves and then performs an action or performs an action and then moves. So all you new, new players, pay attention. Movement. A hero moves by rolling two red dice, square by square, on the game board. A hero cannot mo move diagonally. A hero cannot take part of their move, perform an action, then resume their move. Actions. Uh, one, attack an adjacent monster. Two, cast a spell on a hero, including themselves, or a monster they can see. Three, search for treasure in the room they are in. Four, search for secret doors in the room or corridor they are in. Five, search for traps. Six, disarm a trap on the square they are on. That last part is the part that started this whole conversation. So thanks to Sikashem for bringing it up. So he shared the fact that we have these other images now. So I'm going to bring that up to show you. And this is courtesy of Ribby. Good old Ribby. Uh, you can check out his stuff at Bourbon and Board Games on YouTube. He was there at Gen Con as well. So this is what the new one looks like. I know it's a little blurry, but it says clearly at the top reference card. And let me show you another picture that's a little bit more clear. So on your turn, so this is from First Light. This is, and the date on this is 2024. This is what we saw at Gen Con this year. So, and this was not like something we weren't supposed to look at. Although I don't know if they really wanted us to take photos of cards, but I mean, some of those cards were out, some of them weren't, so. Maybe, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, I don't think this is a spoiler. This is just clarifying the rules. So reference card. On your turn, you can take your movement and then perform an action or perform an action and then take your movement. Movement. Roll two movement dice and move your miniature up to that number of squares on the board. You cannot move diagonally or through walls. If you are adjacent to a door, you can open it, no action required, and move through it. So long as you have enough movement. You cannot use some of your movement, perform an action, then take the rest of your movement. <laughs> Unless you're the monk. But anyway, this is just basic stuff. Okay. Uh, again, from first light. Actions. Below are the actions available to you. Attack. Cast a spell. Search for treasure in this room. Search for secret doors in this room or corridor. Search for traps in this room or corridor. Disarm a trap on the square you move onto. So the question I asked which it occurred to me, <laughs> and this was uh, in our last stream, I always took it as when you're gonna disarm a trap, you just basically say, as you know, as a hero, 
I want to disarm this trap. Dargon's like, okay. And then you just pick up your miniature and you just set it on the square where the trap was detected. And then you roll your dice to see. You know, you've got to have a toolkit and then it's 50% chance if you're the dwarf or I suppose the scout um, or now the explorer, uh, as long as you don't roll black shield. And then it's disarmed and there's nothing to, more to do. But the act of picking up your miniature and setting it on the trap tile does that use up movement or not like the way some people play is they'll say well you're you're saying hey i want to disarm a trap okay we'll roll your movement to see if you have enough to get to the square then you move to the square and say okay i'm disarming the trap then you roll your dice I took it as you just basically teleport to the square. I mean, well, what was the range? Well, I guess as long as you're in the same corridor with it, if you're in the same room with it, you just put yourself on top of the square. I mean, if, if it's a piece of furniture, it's a little harder sometimes. I mean, yes, you can balance on top of a treasure chest. We've proven that even with the new set, you can do that without glue or anything. <laughs> you could balance on top of it, or I guess you could be adjacent to a piece of furniture. But, you know, it's a pit trap, whatever else that's been discovered but not yet sprung. Because unlike in the European version, you can't disarm a trap after it's already been discovered. Or I mean, already sprung. So if you land on a pit trap, then the tile is there. It's permanent. But um, but let's say you've searched for traps and Zargon points to a square and says the floor looks weak. Then you move onto it. But anyway, the problem with the whole teleportation uh, mechanic, which is how I played the game all this time. Like, <laughs> our family, that's how we played it. All our friends, that's how we played it. You didn't have to roll movement and then use your movement to get to the square. So you could disarm the trap and then roll and then move somewhere else. The problem is occasionally people could use it to cheat because they could just like, let's say there's a, there could be a whole row of traps in a corridor ahead of you. You could just like say, well, I'm disarming the one at the end. So you leap over all the other traps for free and disarm that last one. It's like, is that really what they intended? seems a little cheap right it seems like an exploit another thing is there is a section i believe it's in the frozen horror i don't think it's mage of the mirror but i think it's frozen horror where the room itself is cut in half by trap tiles and again if you're using the teleport idea of disarming traps you could like move your miniature to the back end and it's it's as if you freely jumped over all of them now to prevent this sort of thing, Zargon could just say, well, you can disarm the first trap that's in your path, and you can't leap over them. But other than that, what's wrong with the rule? So, anyway, this whole thing of the original, just let, let's, let's look again. So the original version of this reference card, once again, says disarm a trap on the square they are on, so on your turn. But see, if you... And the, the, the rule book clarifies this as, as well. If you're just playing the game and you just you just roll movement and you just land on a square, Zargon's like, well, you've triggered the trap. Now you take damage. The whole point of you saying, I'm disarming the trap first, is to indicate, oh, oh, you're not just blundering into this trap and getting hurt. You're actually trying to disarm it. But the thing is, you have to have discovered the trap first. You can't just move on to any random square and Zargon's like, there's a trap. And you're like, oh, I'm disarming it. Like it, but then it's too late. Then it does sound like you're cheating or you're trying to cheat. So don't be silly like that. But you say, okay, I'm disarming the trap. Okay, well, which one? <laughs> that one. <laughs> you know, um, when I play, when we're streaming, I do put down a tile, like a question mark tile showing where the trap was discovered. Normally in the game, you don't do that. Now in the companion app, it does put the little Zargon, the red Zargon's tile with the question mark again that's a courtesy and the reason for that is you know you're using the app you set the phone down you come back you don't remember where it was um, when you're doing a live stream yeah maybe people look away for a second they don't see my finger um, or we come back you know next week the session nobody remembers now when you were playing the live game the whole thing was somebody searches for traps but then they forget it's like zargon is not obligated to remind them where it was I mean, he can if he wants to, but he could just, just say, I'm not telling. You're going to have to search again. You're going to have to use another turn to find out where the trap was. So, like, when we played, a lot of times people would pick up their dice and, like, set it on the square or they'd set, you know, a, some unused piece of paper or something on there. 
But they go to the restroom, they come back, Zargon moved it. <laughs> so it's like little shenanigans the kids do. There was this other thing here. Check this out. So again, shout out to Ribby and Sikashem for mentioning it. This is the other sides of the reference card on First Light. So instead of wasting time and space and just putting a HeroQuest logo on the other side, they put more text. So this explains combat. It's like, oh great, so this is a nice little thing to have at your side. So I like this kind of stuff. Th these are not simplified rules. This is just maybe a simple explanation of the rules. Two sides of a poker sized card. It's not bad for a hero because Zargon already has the uh, quest book and Zargon has the GM screen. Now this is something Day Dallas from Yield In mentioned and I did not get a picture of the back of the GM screen from HeroQuest First Light, but he says that he saw it and it does have more information on it than the 2021 version. So I'm interested to see what that is. It might just be the same information repeated from the same two cards, but it might have other things. I mean, the classic one just had, it just showed you all the furniture symbols and what they were and um, the North American version just had all the monster stats and then, yeah, what they can do on their actions, what the heroes can do. So, reference card, attacking a monster. One, announce which monster you're attacking. Unless you're using a ranged weapon, that monster must be adjacent to you. Two, roll your attack dice. Three, each skull you roll counts as one hit. Any other symbols don't count towards the attack. Ignore those dice. Shows a picture of a skull. Four, if you roll any skull, Zargon immediately rolls that monster's defend dice. Five, for each black Zargon shield, the monster rolls. One skull you rolled is blocked and canceled. So, so it shows a picture of the monster shield. Interesting they call it a black Zargon shield. I don't think it was ever called that before. It was just called a black shield or a monster shield. <laughs> the bunny of immortal evil, as some people jokingly referred to it. Uh, again, the first light reference card. Number six, Zargon records any hits the monster doesn't block by placing a skull tile under the monster's miniature. Now that's easier said than done if you're using the Frozen Horror, which is a huge miniature, it takes up four squares. It's a little tough with the ogre bosses and against the ogre horde because they take up two squares. So they got that surfboard they're standing on and there's no space to like put tiles on top like there is for the giant wolf but anyway those are special circumstances most miniatures you can pretty easily do it even if the monster has like multiple body points like lots and lots of body points but stacking 10 tiles underneath uh, an ogre lord it's kind of kind of annoying Okay, and then again, this is the reference card from First Light. Step seven, if the monster's body points reach zero, that monster dies and is removed from the game board. If the monster has body points remaining at the end of the attack, it stays on the board. And notice the copyright date of 2024. That doesn't mean it has to come out this year, but would be nice. Seems like that's their goal. They could always reprint it with 2025, I suppose. And we still haven't seen the back of the box yet. And we also don't know what little changes could be inside the quest book. Uh, we have heard reports of things called blessings and curses that exist in the game. How do they work? Who knows? We know about sly storage, thanks to Doug. We know about the hearth healing or whatever it's called, the uh, fireplace healing. But what other things could be in there? Who can say? There could be other tweaks in the rule book. We didn't see the rule book, so we don't know what's... I mean, it, it was out there, but we didn't get to read it. So there could be other little tweaks in First Light. But again, whether you decide to apply those rules retroactively to the rest of your HeroQuest experience, it's up to you. People who start out playing First Light, like that's their first experience of HeroQuest, they might end up doing that. All right, let's see how we are. So Vorticon is here, welcome. Let's see. Ah, welcome, Jacer. Okay, and Bohemius is back. So Bohemius is the wizard. So we got our wizard. Jacer, are you with us? You guys can talk now. 
if you want. Hello. Hey. How are you doing tonight? Doing well. How about yourselves? Not too bad. Good. Yeah, I was noticing that, um, well, I guess it's been a few weeks now and I didn't see it, but Amalgamash was posting on his uh, YouTube that he had some kind of water leak or something, so he's having to move stuff around. It's like, oh man, that sucks, because I know he's got a big board game collection, and I mean, you want to save everything that's important, but when that's your hobby too, that's not, moisture isn't good for those. So hopefully he got it all cleaned up. I've heard of that happening to other people, too. And I also saw that he was moving his videos from Amalgamash, which was his original YouTube channel, I think, to uh, AshQuest, which is rapidly growing, and that's the HeroQuest-focused one. So anyway, we wish him well with that. So, yeah, I was talking about the reference cards. Um... And thanks, Bohemius, for your feedback on that as well. So any other news in the world of Hero Quest we need to cover before we get get to playing? Mm, nope. No news. Yeah, probably not till beginning of October or so. Anyway, that's what, that's my thought on it. Mm -hmm. The next uh, stuff to come down. I, I go with the dwarf or the dwarf and the elf. Okay. Yeah, if someone else pops in. The monk is uh, still trapped in the void. Let me just turn this on. Yeah, sorry for the late start, but uh, okay. All right, so I think it is my turn at this time. So the uh, wolf is asleep, but let's see if we can wake him up. Oops, wrong. No, I forgot it's a movement die. Nope. Had to be a six, so he's still asleep. Got the specter here. One, two, three. Oh, I could attack the wizard. Four, five, six, seven. the evil power light went out <laughs> there we go okay so the specter attacks and of course he's empowered by the evil of the dread moon so he attacks with four it's a wizard two skulls all right ching and one hit wizard goes down The elixir. Ah. The five body point. Five turns. Okay. So we'll use one to immediately bring you back, and then for the next five turns, you'll get, or the next four turns, I should say, you get one back each time. Wait a minute, do you have the elixir? Mm. Hold on a second. Yeah. I got one, I don't know when, but I got, I got one well, I, know you, I know you got one, but uh, was it this quest? Nope. No, you have it for, you have it for Crypt of Perpetual Darkness. 
I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, okay, looking at the right one now. So, okay, so your choices are you've got the, I mean, you'll still be okay, but you've got two potions of restoration. Yeah. You've got two plus four healings. And I hear the cash-ins happening there. Okay, so we've got some potions that were purchased. Let's see what they are. Okay, Wardicon just cashed in three bonus potions for hero. So I take it those might be going to the wizard. <laughs> Let's see what they are. Okay. So first, poison. Well, we'll ignore that because it's a safe one. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, he drinks poison. <laughs> okay, potion of speed. So that's for the elf. Celerity. Potion of healing. Four lost body points. Okay, so that's a good one for you. And Potion of Rejuvenation, that's 1d6. So I actually got a pretty good deal there. Whoever needs them, he says. Okay, so there's a 1d6, there's a plus 4, and we'll give the other one to the Elf. That's Celerity. Okay, so we've got the plus 4 and the 1d6. Did you want one or both of those for your character? Uh, give one to the... Uh... Elf? Who was it? Yeah, the elf. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm going to drink the uh, plus four right now, so. Okay. Give the other one to the elf. So the elf gets the d6. The elf should have two of those now. Okay, so you get uh, three more back. To be full. Excellent. Okay, so he's alive, but I've got other monsters. One, two, three, four. All right, Chaos Warrior, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so he attacks with five. Two skulls against the dwarf. Perfect. Ka ching Let me just check my uh, cards here. Aha. Okay. Pit trap. Despite precautions, you spring an unseen trap. So I pick a random hero, they automatically spring a pit trap. Three. Okay, out of the three that are in play. I guess the Barbarian isn't really in play, so I should just put one of these until somebody joins us. So we do have a hero slot open, if you're watching. Watching us live. Just go in order. Okay. So the elf sprang an unseen pit trap, and he falls in. And then the evil blob continues to pulsate and uh, entrap the uh, what we think is the queen and also the monk. 
Oh, yes. And then one more monster I have to move. This elite chaos warrior. He's making his way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, back to the heroes, starting with the wizard. It's not rolling. Okay. Uh, let's go with the uh, Talon. Okay. Okay. Well, since they are magical, so that'd be one hit. Well, let's see if I can defend. Ching! Survived. Uh, take one step to the left and pass. Okay, the dwarf. Uh, can I take one step to the left and attack the sleeping wolf? Yep. So he's just laying down there. You can attack him. And he takes two damage. Because he can't defend himself. So he's got three left. I could put it under him, I guess. Alright. Alright, um, for the elf. Uh, let's. Uh,. Drink the potion of uh, Elven Speed there, and move him three spaces right outside the room. Equip the longbow, and I'd like to shoot the uh, wolf and the Chaos Warrior. Ah, because of the double attack. I'm going to say, yeah. yes, you can hit him from here. Sounds good. Okay, so first. The wolf. Wolf. Three. Okay. Got him. Oh. And then the chaos warrior. Two. Okay, he defends with four. Takes two damage. Let's see, and celerity lasts until you take damage, I believe. Yes. Or potion of speed, as it's known in the original. All right, and that will end my turn. All right. Chaos Warrior is going to move one, two to attack the elf with five, three skulls, elf.
All right, three shield. Ching combo breaker. All right, wrestling move. Uh, let's go with the drop kick through the door. All right, catch him in the face, with both feet, taking him down. Okay, this um, specter is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and attack the elf with four. Four skulls. Bad you weren't a monster. Okay, so that's four yeah, damage. Went the other way on the shield. All right, down to one. All right, the Chaos Warrior continues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, the blob pulsates with evil power. And it just extrudes out this uh, ogre. All right, heroes. Chaser, maybe we, we need to destroy that blob. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's search this corridor. Did we already search this corridor for uh, traps? No, it's the first time because uh, the, uh, the elf ran in the other, the other room. So I'll search for traps, this corridor. No traps detected yep. in the corridor? And move two squares to the right. Okay. And pass. Okay, the dwarf. I guess three to the right and one north. And I'll use my Berserker Fury. Ah. Berserker Fury. So you get to trade your defend dice for attacks. Yep. Um, so... I'm going to go with the full, the full thing, I guess, all of them. Okay, so how many dice is that? Nine. Uh, dang. Because if I, if I equipped it a battle axe, then I would lose my tower shield bonus, so I'd actually go down a die. So. Call the police. <laughs> it's cheating. Wow, okay. Two, three, four. The wrestling move. All right. The blob surges with anger and tries to defend itself.
Okay. It uh, plays Monster Shield. So uh, any monster, let's see. Yeah, Servant of Chaos may use this card to cause one of his lackeys to take the damage intended for him. Okay, so the blob switches places with the ogre who takes the damage. And a wrestling move on him too, so that's five damage for the ogre. Right. What's your wrestling move gonna be? Uh let's go with this let's go with the stunner. Bring him down to my size. Alright. Alright, got him. Alright, you see a slime trail where the where the creature moved. Oh, I'm sorry, were you here or were you you were here? Uh I was, yeah, there I think. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now the elf. Eat for movement. Let's go two north and one west and I will drink the heroic brew okay and I will shoot at the I'll shoot at both enemies I'll do the I guess the uh the banshee there first. Ah oh, yes, the spectral banshee. Yep. And missed. And then the blob. Three to the blob of dread. Oh, you know, I just realized something. Uh, since I'm considering this a wraith, it's actually ethereal, so he should have the same abilities as a spell. Oh, okay, so then one. <laughs> so I didn't need to do the whole, like, dodge the, the damage thing. Okay, but yeah, you still got one. Okay, so let me roll defense. One damage. All right, my turn. Oh, welcome, Jimmy Lee for more car. Yeah, we're playing some live Hero Quest here, so you can uh, interact in the chat using your gold coins, your channel points. Most welcome. We've got a lot of house rules, but should be pretty easy to follow along after a while here. Okay, so my turn. Alright, the uh, Spectre Banshee is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and attack the Elf with 4, 1 Skull. One shield blocked. All right. The elite cast warrior continues his march. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the blob, what shall the blob do? Ah, thank you. Vorticon just rede redeemed a uh, skill card for hero for anyone. Someone gets parry and repost. Who wants it? <laughs> Get it to the door. The dwarf, the dwarf. Okay, because he, he's in the line of fire. Well, you're both in the line of fire, but... Preparing a post to the dwarf, okay. I've got so many abilities, I'm just going to look at them all here. Decisions, decisions. Okay, I'm going to use Ambush. So one monster appears suddenly out of nowhere to attack a hero. The hero cannot roll any defense dice against the first attack by the ambushing monster. And we're going to have it attack the elf. It's a specter or banshee. It's evil, that's what it is. Actually, four, two skulls. You take two damage. And the elf is down. I drink uh, D6 healing. Okay. Back up at six. Wow. That's a good roll. Good roll indeed. Okay, just checking to see what I got here. All right, the uh, the blob is going to use one of its powers. Summon specters. Spell conjures up a group of undead to surround and protect the spellcaster. Roll one red die to determine how many specters appear. OK. 
Okay, so I got a four, so that means two specters. Alright, and then the blob is going to slowly move into the corner. Let's see, and then the Chaos Warrior continues to move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now would be a great time for the Barbarian to jump in. Uh, okay, let's see. And did I move this last Spectre? Can't remember. Yeah, it attacked the uh, Already did. Elf. Okay. Let's give myself extra, extra moves here. Okay. All right. Back to you, heroes. Okay. Uh, only for our movement. I fucking hate you. No, no, no. Eight. So, just enough to get in front of that door. This, this door? The, yes. Yes. I'm going to drink, uh, well, I can't turn inside once we're right. Yeah, you could go Eight. in one more square if you want. One square inside. And I'm going to cast, I'm going to use the potion of, um, what I call, what I call, uh, um, ah. I was... I'm going to recall uh, a courage, courage, and then split courage on the elf and the dwarf. Ah, using the the older potion, yes, the Is the magical optic. No, magic. I was called wizardry. Yes. Yeah, let me double check. It's, I get them confused too. They get used so rarely, but whenever they do, it's. Uh, Aptitude is two different spells. Yeah, so it must I be should a, have both. Yeah, wizardry. One uh, of wizardry and two of aptitude. But I have, only have one spell, so <laughs> okay. I cannot cast more. So you get that's that's a that's an interesting use. So wizardry gets used to do courage on both heroes. Wow. Yeah, can we let me split that, the other one that make me cast two different spells? Right. So the flames of courage. Rouse the dwarf and the elf. And you go, guys. What, Jason? <laughs> All right. And I'm going to say that they uh, give you two extra black dice because of your experience as a wizard. Okay, so dwarf. One. Right, not much for movement. So I'm going to attack the uh, specter to my left. Okay. Remember to add two extra black dice to your attack. Oh, nothing. Too bad. You have to and roll I'll, bad. <laughs> and I'll have to take one uh, one step south. Oh yeah, you'd want your your dice to turn blue <laughs> so that you could 
get those black shields. Okay, one south. Yes, please. Okay. All right, now the elf. This feels like a Pokemon battle at a certain point. <laughs> yes, I have played that game. Only a little with my uh, nephew. Six. Um. Let's go two to the right and one south. And I'll shoot at the uh, the race there with the longbow. Okay, so the big race. Yeah, you've got a clear shot. Wow. Okay. So one. Interesting move, technically. All right. Let's see if I got right. got anything. My only hope is get arrested. Nope. Or, wait a minute. No, the Wraith. Excuse me, excuse me. I, I rolled wrong. Uh, before defense. I'll roll one more. Still nothing. Dang. Okay, so it's a hit. And another hit. Okay, what's your wrestling move going to be? I'm going to have the... Uh... The elf, give me a little push. I'm gonna duck underneath the spec the specters in front there, and then just do an uppercut at the last second. Okay, this is the dwarf doing this. No, this is the elf. The elf. Okay, he gives himself a push. But yeah. How do? Can... All right. He's covered in ectoplasm. He's like wiping it off, and it's really gross. He feels so funky, but it does damage. Okay. All right, what's next? Me, me, me. All right, Chaos Warrior continues his march. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. All right. The wraiths are going to move in. One, two, attacking the wizard. Two skulls. hits all right this wraith is going to move forward one to attack the dwarf one skull No damage. This wraith is going to move forward to attack the elf. Spectre. Might have said wraith. Ah, an evil wrestling move. And I didn't block it. Nope. The, uh, the specter like grabs the his his hand becomes solid for a second. He grabs the the grabs the throat of the of the elf, and then with the other hand he like shoves the like goopy hand down your throat. You're like, You're, like choking on the slime. Like, ah! <laughs> you take damage.
Okay. And then this specter is going to one, two, and attack the wizard. One skull wizard. Too bad you weren't a monster. One damage. I'm hearing some feedback. Oh, <laughs> the crowd. Boo, boo. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I added crowd noises, but it's all, like, distorted, so it sounds funny. Oh, okay, well, we'll work on that. Okay, so one damage for the wizard. But I still got the blob. Actually, I'm not sure I can even target anybody. Where am I at? Uh, sorry, did I did I move the cast warrior? Ready. Yes, that's okay. how you started your turn. I've got too much to do on my turn. That's the problem. Okay, yeah, it's Argon with too much to do. Doesn't doesn't normally happen. Okay, I've got other cards here. Blob is going to move. And. Uh, can I target the wizard from here? I'm going to see if he can. Skull, yeah. He can. And the diagonal. Oh, don't even have to roll for it. If he takes up one, two... Well, it's for me, for me, it's, I mean, there's a diagonal, uh, uh, it, it takes it takes four squares, right? The, uh, the blob. This one kind of takes up more, but let's just say one, two, three, four. Yeah. Five yeah, again. from there you can get the, uh, okay. the diagonal. All right. Keeping me, keeping me honest here. Okay, so he can hit. All right, in that case, I'm going to use... Dread lights against the wizard for all the good it'll do, for all the evil it'll do. This spell surrounds any one hero in the spellcaster's line of sight with eerie tongues of ghostly light. All monsters roll one additional attack die when attacking the affected hero. The spell can be broken at once or on the start of the hero's future turns by the affected hero rolling one red die. If a five or six is rolled, the spell is broken. So go ahead, roll your. D6. Yeah, it's just one chance. It's not each of your mind points like some other spells. Six. Oh, <laughs> this guy. He snuffs it out and laughs at it. And that's used up. Okay, heroes. Starting with the wizard. Okay, the wizard stabs the uh, uh, the rate on the left. Okay. With the talent. Ah, the magic Two skulls. Talent. Okay, they count. Oh, too bad it wasn't a hero. It falls into the pit. Splash. Lots of goo everywhere. Got him. <clears throat> uh, 
moving. Uh, move to three, one, two, three, three squares to the right. Two, three. Yep. And pass. All right. Chaser with the dwarf. Wrong guy. Hold on. All right. See, we all do it. Six. Six. All right. <laughs> I'll take the south route. So I'll go south and then I'll go to the west uh, three spaces. And then I'll shoot at the uh, wraith. All right, the black shields count. You've got some kind of magical weapon. Oh, it's... missed again. Yeah, so the black uh, black dice don't help that much <laughs> against him. Well, actually, against any of these, really. Yeah. Of course, I guess it doesn't affect... I mean, there's still the same number of black shields on the black dice as are the white, so I guess it doesn't hurt anything either. But... Just extra dice. Okay. All right, and then the elf. I'm gonna go long, long sword and shield, and attack the wraith in front of me. Okay. Nothing. All right, your weapon just goes right through the goo and comes back out. No solid purchase from the blade. All right, still got movement. Eight. So, two to the east and three north. That'll end my turn. All right. Chase. Ah, I see what you're doing. <laughs> but can I pass up my chance to kill a hero? Let's 
these creatures here. I'm going to that specter to attack the elf. One skull. Ching, no damage. The specter to attack the wizard. Two skulls. Two damage. Yep. Down. I'll take a restoration potion. One body point, one mind point. Alright. I should have a total of three now. Two plus four and one restoration. Um, I have it written down differently. Maybe we should double check these. No, it's because probably you take it. Since uh, I used the one day uh, uh, Wardy can give me, uh, you, you take it out. <laughs> oh, maybe I forgot to erase it. Mm. Okay, so you used your final restoration, but I have three plus. No, four. I have uh, I have one. I have one left. One left. And and two uh, plus four. I have you have three plus four. Is, what about the one that was just gifted? I just I just used one. The one the word they could give me probably. Maybe I must have get written. confused. <laughs> okay, all right. So you've got two plus fours left. And one restoration. And one restoration. Oh, restoration. you know what? Plus I think one, you're right, because I, I was like subtract. I thought the, the thing wasn't yeah. working, but actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, so you get one body point back. Your mind points are at full. Yeah. Keeping me on track here. All right. And then this, this one is going to move here and attack the dwarf. One skull. This is like in those video games where, uh, well, I'm thinking of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like Shredder always splits into one more than you have players. If you've got two turtles, he splits into three. Four, he splits into five. Ching, no damage. All right, Chaos Warrior continues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's in the room. All right, so he's attacking the dwarf with five black dice because he is elite. Three skulls. Ching, and one damage, dwarf. Oh man, sound alerts have messed up tonight. Thank you. Ubar. <laughs> Ubar says, beware of the blob. It creeps and leaps and glides and slides across the floor, right through the door, around the wall, a splotch, a blotch. Be careful of the blob. Okay, I don't, I'm not familiar with the song, so I'm probably doing it wrong. <laughs> Scared the crap out of me. Yeah, skill card for hero. Skill for the hero and more to come. Thank you. Charisma. Well, there's no henchmen, so let's try another one. Dodge and trip. All right. Uh, so give it. 
to the, to the elf, elf or the wizard. Yeah. Elf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, dodge and trip for the elf. I heard a potion cashed in there. Bonus potion for hero. Potion of Battle Rage. Well, they go to the Barbarian. Since he's not in play, you can spread these all around as you see fit. We'll, uh, we'll draw another one. Magic Resistance. Potion of Magic Resistance against all effects. That could come in handy. Who wants that? Do you have with the Dwarf? He's got one that's against damage, not against effects. I right, give it to him. Resistance against all. He had one earlier, but it's been used up. Okay, good. Thanks, Fubar. Okay, so I did that. So the the wraith is the last one left. Okay, let's see who doesn't have magic resistance. Who so I can spam with something. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so not the dwarf. Well, it's like if I know you've got it, I'm just like, okay, don't don't use it on him. All you guys got to do is bring the barbarian into play, and he can clean house. Where's Ribby at? Ribby. Rabby, 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 Rabby. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I'm going to use. Channel Dread against the wizard. Okay, so since I'm adjacent to that uh, banshee means I get a plus one. So it's 1d6 plus one. Three, so four. So that means one body point of damage. I use the uh, uh, magic resistance against damage. You have one? Last one. I, I should have won. I don't know. You don't have one. I should have one resistance against damage and one resistance against effect. Uh I I feel like I should go over these because I I think there may be some discrepancies. Um let me look at the other one. You want me to tell you what I have on my yes, list? Please. Yes, please. So I got uh, one dexterity, one vision, one airwalk, one alchemy, one uh, magical aptitude, one charm, one caltrops, three dagger, two restoration. Uh, no, sorry. Yes, one restoration. One restoration, yep. Two healing, two antidote. Two defense, one magic resist against uh, damage, one magic uh, magic resistance against effects, and five grog. <laughs> okay, I don't have any of the magic resistance ones. I have, you have three grog. Did you remember to count the ones that were destroyed by the banshees? You dis destroy by the dead banshee, you destroy uh, the, the one of the three spell, the magic. Yes. The, uh, and uh, you destroyed an heroic peru, I don't remember, one grog. I don't remember what else. Yeah, the grog was the, the worst. Yeah, the worst lost. Yes, I don't have any more. A six pack, I have only five. <laughs> must pay okay well 
I, I don't know what happened to those other. Give that man another grog. Okay, I'm gonna make. I did not. Yeah, I'm gonna make an appeal to the audience. Is there any anyone out there who can buy this man a potion? <laughs> Here, do we hear? Uh... No, it's okay. It's it's just weird. Uh, this thing too. Well, I'm not trying to cheat anybody here, but yeah, I'm just not. Me too. Sometimes uh, potions just just dis disappear. A rat drank it. Okay. Well, there's a one d six. Okay. We we got the restoration. Oh, he's get you, getting you another one. Thank you, Fubar. Somebody came through. Potion of strength. And a healing potion. Okay. <laughs> Will you accept that in trade? <laughs> <laughs> so got a potion of, potion of strength. And which healing? The D6? Yeah. So technically you have two more D6 healings. The D6, I, I had zero. <laughs> See, I don't know, probably, I don't know, uh, was a uh, mix-up with another game? Is it possible? Maybe, maybe. But anyway. Because I, I really, I really had the, the elixir, I'm sure, for example. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Okay, I mean, we could review the video later, and maybe I'm wrong, but, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's just, Last one it, it's grog. just too much. There's too much discrepancy this uh, this time. Normally, we don't have this kind of uh, yeah, true. discrepancy. Yeah, we are in the in the realm of reflection. It could be that there's distortions, warp <sighs> space, going to be, <laughs> making it hard. Um, yeah. So Fubar says this last one is a grog from my mother's recipe. She doesn't know how to make grog. <laughs> <laughs> I've made glog before. I've never made grog, but I suppose you just uh, mix fruit and water with uh, rum. <laughs> to make a grog all right well you uh your choice then you've got the uh the, the d6s so two d two one d6 healings two plus four healing mm -hmm. um no magic resistance i could find so what will you use to revive yourself here uh use the uh the six okay roll away Full. Ah, yes. Completely healed. Alright, I guess that's all the damage I can do, so back to the heroes. I think this will go uh, another round <laughs> after, I mean another week, another session after this. It's quite a fight. So, what's called, what I can read all it. Yes, going for the, the, the double stab. One, yeah. so one skull. Oh, one hit. Mm -hmm. right, let's see if I can defend. The Banshee comes up empty. <laughs> the dagger Melt. melts him like a snail, covered in salt. <laughs> I'm going to move one, two, three, four, four uh, north, and I stay there in the corner. Okay. Uh, go, Jacer. Right. I'm gonna attack 
The uh, Chaos Warrior. Right, the Elite Chaos Warrior. Four, Four skulls. Wow. <laughs> so you oh, right, and I finally get that black shield, too. <laughs> the one that you always wanted. Okay. All right, he defends with four blue. Ching, but he takes two hits. He's badly, badly damaged. She was waiting for some action. You gave it to him. Okay, anything else, Dwarf? Well, I guess you'd have to jump over the pit. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold my shield up high. All right. Um, elf. Elf is gonna go one north and then one to the west. And I'm gonna shoot at the blob. Okay. Black shields. Missed. Missed. All right, it just, like a, a little hole opens up in the jello and the arrow just kind of goes through and hits the wall and then it forms back together. Like a hand forms in it and it goes like this, it wags its finger. <laughs> yep, no luck on that one. All right, that it? Yep, that was my move and my action. Okay. My turn. All right, the elite cast warrior is going to attack the dwarf first. Five dice. Five skull. I'm going to use uh, my skill there. Ah, okay. Parry and repost? Yes. Okay. And let's see. That means that... I counterattack and you defend with one less? Yep. You completely parry the attack without taking any damage. Immediately follow up with a return attack. The opponent defends against your attack with one less. Four skulls. Wow, and I only defend with three. Three blue. You might get him. Ch Ching! Oh, so close. Good. He like raises his visor, and you see a look of surprise, but also uh, admiration. <laughs> Give him the thumbs up. He marched a long way to fight me. Yep. Picked the wrong side, but you know there was a little a little trace of honorable warrior left in him that respected the fight you put up. Yep, got him. Okay, so after that disastrous move, uh, an opening has appeared. Hmm. Dwarf is pretty low. Okay. Uh, the specter attacks him with four. Three skulls. Ching! And takes one damage. Finish him off. And the elf is in the way. All right, the specter is going to move one, two, three, four. Five. Attack the dwarf. Three 
three skulls. Ching and one hit. All right, I'm uh, going to drink my half-filled potion of healing. Okay. So the plus two. Yeah, the specter was trying to shove you into the pit, but you shrugged him off, shoved him back. the big blob all right the um, the dread race here is going to cast fear against the elf spell causes anyone here to become so fearful that they may only use one attack die the spell may be broke can be broken by the hero on a future turn by rolling one red die for each of their mind points if a six is rolled the spell is broken All right, go ahead, attempt your resistance. So you've got quite a few mind points, if I remember correctly. Four. You get four chances. Let's see, a six has to be rolled, so you failed. All right, so you're under fear. Now, the only thing I'm thinking of here is uh, the effects of courage. So if it reduces you down to one, but then courage raises you back up two more, so you'd have three. I think so. And I didn't think that fear could be used on a creature with courage, but it might be that courage automatically breaks fear or something in somewhere. Yeah, I it has a weird, weird interaction. Yeah, I don't know how. So that goes. wait, it's never wait. Come up uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, it is important the spelling of fear. What? It, what it says because it says you cannot roll more than one. Uh, even courage cannot go over it because uh, if you say what do you say, roll it. Because I hear to become the so fearful that they may only use one attack die so they may only use one so he's limited to one they cannot go over one but if somebody else I, I, cast courage our, our on you after the fact maybe it would yes but even so because courage may give you two additional dice right dice right and while yeah. this one tell that you cannot use more than one so in any occasion you cannot use more than one, but he's, he's I, I would interpret. Ah, because, because I'm probably thinking of when you go into shock, because with shock, you get reduced, yeah. but you can add stuff you, to it. If you are reduced to one, then you can add stuff, but they say you, can, you cannot roll more than one. I mean, another thing. Okay, so we just got an uncommon feat. Fubar says, doesn't the dwarf like his beef jerky to be really salty? He should throw some at the blob. Well, the only problem is I'm not sure he has any beef jerky. Did he pick any up in the last quest? Plus, he's been very hungry. He's been uh, I don't know. <laughs> he does have a caltrop and a smoke bomb. I don't know if that would be any use. Since uh, the uncommon feats are subject to my uh, discretion, I'm going to say no on that. But it is a funny, funny thought. So sorry about that, Fubar. 250 gold coins down the drain. But if you, I'll give you one more chance. If you want to type something else in there that you think is a little more plausible, <laughs> we could try it. Dwarf always is beef jerky. I don't know if that's been established in the lore. <laughs> 
Go ahead, uh, Fubar. If you think of something else, you can. Uh, you can. I'll let you type in one more thing. You don't have to use gold coins for it, but uh, we'll see. Jacer's thinking of one right now. I can hear the wheels turning. Okay. So anyway, um, at this point, fear is upon the elf. Hmm, let's see, I have nine movement though. Oh, I know, I should have done this long ago. Okay. All right, you hear uh, you hear uh, mad laughter coming from the the blob, and you hear a, a scream, ah! and it just kind of like shakes and it restores a body point. And then it shakes again. You hear another scream, more manly scream, and another body point is restored. All right, that's it. Back to the heroes. Jacer has one limb taken. I'm okay with losing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do, Fubar. I'm sure you do. Okay, wizard. Six. Six. One, two, three. Yes. Uh, go six. Uh, going to four uh, south. Two left and attack the. Uh... Or yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Those calls. Ooh, that could be a kill. Let's see. Can you kill something that's already dead? Or is it? Just a more wretched form of life. Ching! Ah, oh, the other one got him. Ah, what a world, what a world, what a world. Fire goes out. Go, Jacer. If you had all a right, shield like up and you blocked all the slime that like splayed All the out. slime that time? Yeah, all the slime that time. All right. I'll, uh, one space to the right and another shot at the bob. Okay. Sidestep. Ah, we have a comment. Okay, so Fubar says, ah, the monk. A spiritual man like him would have sacred salts on him. Being jostled around like that in the blob, I'm assuming he's still in there, <laughs> might take away a body point. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Well, he can't squeeze a body point from the monk. He'll use twisting turret. <laughs> Except uh, his powers were used up, if, if we remember. He has Not been meditating. Those two. He only used two of them. He still had twisting turret because you wouldn't let me use it when you captured me. Because if he used Twisting Turn, he would have just burnt his way out of there. I see. The inside out. Okay. Well, um, let's let's resolve the, the attack first. Okay, so you fired, you got one. That's a hit. All right. Would you like to try the uncommon feat as the uh, as the monk? Yes. All right. Roll one combat die. If it's a skull, you succeed and do one damage. If you fail, however, don't roll yet. If you fail, let's see. Uh, you're going to lose a body point yourself. Take a body point from the blob, not the monk. It all depends on. 
Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Okay, well, let, let me revise this. So Fubar did redeem it as an uncommon feat. So it should have a oh, greater okay. chance. Okay, so you're saying that. when he was screaming, if he avoids it, you, the blob doesn't get life yeah. and the monk doesn't yeah. lose life. But if he fails, then the blob did gain that life and the monk yeah. goes down one. But, but I'll give you a, a better chance. So let's see. I was going to say you only fail on a black shield. So, yeah. Okay. So he doesn't take damage and... It failed to heal. So, okay. You see like a burning sensation going through the through the inside of the blob. It's like... Rah! All right. You hear some muffled chanting. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe the monk's getting stronger as the blob gets weaker. Yeah. All right, so now we have... Drain my life, I'll drain yours. Awkwardly assisted in a way. Yep. Still no sixes. Oh man, a lot of fives though. Yeah, too bad it's not five or a six. Okay, and his regular turn. Um, this is the elf now. Do I have any spells left? Good question. The elf has used sleep, so he has veil of mist and water feeling left. Alright, I'm going to use water of healing on the dwarf. Dwarf gets four body points restored. And I move three spaces south. Right. Figure I'll feel braver next to my comrades. <laughs> my turn so specter it's gonna attack the dwarf no nope, here okay attacking the dwarf with four two skulls Man, too bad that wasn't an attack. So two hits for the dwarf. Yep, down to four. Good thing he got healed. Okay. The wraith goes and it heals itself once. <laughs> ah, skill card for hero. Okay, let's see what it is. Disarm and capture. Oh, wouldn't that be interesting? Who wants disarm and capture? Uno reverse. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I say give it to the uh, the wizard. He can combine that with uh, his strength and his dagger or whatever and actually do something. <laughs> I particularly killed all the, the, the ghosts here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to deal with the big one. <laughs> okay, so you need a prisoner for information. If you roll enough combat dice to kill an opponent, that opponent is disarmed and captured instead. So, 
That's what that does. Okay. So I, I did the healing and I can still do my movement action. So let's see, who should I kill? So the blob goes, oozes forward slowly and attacks the, the dwarf with six. Since it's empowered by the Dread Moon, it's actually seven. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he rolls seven. Why didn't he do it before? Well, he was using his evil magic and trying to drain the life from his prisoners. Oh, and after all that, only two skulls. Dwarf, defend yourself. All right, I'm going to drink one of my potions of defense. Excellent. Okay, so one defense potion is used. You get two extra dice. Just one time. Eight. Ching 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 you somehow grab like part of the blob and like twist it and as you do that it jostles around and you see that there appears to be some type of uh, some arcane device inside it looks like it has there's a there's a, a form a human or human or elven form inside it and there appears to be another form of uh, Maybe it's your friend, uh, the monk, inside. Are they still alive? Who knows? But, yeah. Did damage. It's like... Okay. Alright, it's my turn. And I hate to do this to you guys, but it is getting late, and I feel like uh, we should stop here. It will be the hero's turn. Next time. Hero's turn. All right. Anything we need to plug here at the end? War Builder 22J. Good game, guys. Good game. Thank you. Is that a dog? Good game. Thanks background? for playing. It's like, <laughs> I feel like uh, Rick Moranis in Ghostbusters. <laughs> okay, who bought the dog? <laughs> it's trashing the place. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, anyway, yep. Thanks, everybody. So, yeah, we'll just pick up next time. Sorry we had to start late, but, yeah, this uh, this could go on for a while, so we'll see. But you guys have made great progress. It's pretty exciting to see how it unfolds. So we will stop the stream here momentarily and see who we can raid. Thank you all for joining us, especially the new people. Appreciate you, uh, Fubar, Junior, Inklings, Jimmy Lee, for Morikar, Wardicon. Anybody else that stopped by that I might have missed? Appreciate your support here on HeroQuest fans.